So let's try to implement the quick sort logic. So what you're going to do here is we got these values here. So this is the logic for the insertion. So what I will do is I will just remove the entire part here. We got this array and we are going to perform the operation. Now, of course, you can write the entire logic here, but then remember quick sort goes for recursion. So when you say recursion, you have to create a function or the method which will get called. So what I will do is I will create a function here and let's call them. So we'll say a quick sort as a function name or the method name, which will take three parameters. Now, what are the three parameters? The first one is the array itself on which you want to perform the operation. Next is the starting point and the ending point of each section. Example, at the start, it will be the entire array. But remember when we have to break it down. So that is your each section. Okay, so we have to specify the low and then you have to specify the high. Now, in this case, what is low? So low is zero and the high is basically the array dot length minus one, right? That's the value you have to send. Now, basically, we don't have this function. So we can just right click here and say, okay, I want the IDE to create this method for me. Maybe just using some inbuilt methods. Okay, let's create our own. So what I will do here is I will create a method called public. I don't want to get the object. So I will say static void quick sort and it will take these three values. So first it will take a int array. In fact, one of the syntax of array, you can write it on the, this side because it will make much more sense. You got array and then you got int low, then you got int high. So these are the variables you need. And then you can start performing the operation. So basically from the main, you're calling quicksort only once, but quicksort will be calling itself. Okay, but based on what? Now, basically I want quicksort to call itself only till when your low is less than high. We don't want it, right? So that's what it makes sense, right? Low should be low, high should be high. And if it is true, then keep calling the quicksort. So I will, I will keep calling the quicksort, but the question is, what values have to pass. Now think about this. If you have one big array, and then you're saying that we'll be breaking this into two parts. So don't you think you have to call quicksort two times for two different arrays? That's right, so you have to call two times. But the question is, what are the values? For sure, the first variable will be array because that's what we are sending, right? We have to sort the array. The question is, what will be the low? What will be the high? Because when you divide your array into two parts, what should be the starting point of the second array and the ending point of the second array? That's what you have to mention. But how will you know the starting point? It is easy actually. Here, the starting is always low for the first array and the ending is always high for the second array. Okay, even that is solved. The problem is with the ending of the first array and the starting of the second array. That's what we need to find. Now, how do you find this? For this, we have to run a partition. Okay, so this is the logic which, which we have to refer to. So what I will do is I will just reduce the ID size so that I can see those values. I mean, this logic. So this is what we have to implement in the partition. So basically to get this value, the pivot value, what you will do is you will say int pi equal to, and you will create a method called partition in which you will pass three values, the same three values array, low and high. So basically in the logic, I have not mentioned it, but we want this value as well. Okay, so we need to create this method. So what I will do is I will just go back here, more actions, create a method. Okay, so we got the method. Let's perform operation on this method. We can make it private because we're not going to use partition outside this class. So private works, but what should be the logic here? And we have to return something. Remember, we have to return the PI value. Okay, so we can write the same logic which we have written here. And once you get this PI, you can basically pass the PI and we don't want to include the PI. So we can say PI minus one. And here we have to pass PI plus one because every partition when you create, you don't consider the PI, right? PI stays there. You create two parts and then those are your two partitions. But we have to find this PI, that's the main task. And for that, we have to write this logic, which is mentioned here. So we need some variables. The first one is temporary pivot variable. And we have to assume pivot for the first time. So the pivot here is always high. So that's the algorithm we are using, but we can pick up the starting value or randomly any pick any value that works. So let's say we got a uh, pivot high. And then we also need one more variable, which is I. Remember, we have to use this I, which will return. So I is basically your low minus one. Remember, if the, if the array starts with zero, the I will be at minus one. Next, we need a loop. So we can get the entire loop from here, or maybe you can type. So we can say for int j is equal to zero. In fact, not zero, right? It should be always low because when you create different partitions, not every partition will start with zero, but they will start with low. So j less than equal to high and j plus plus. I'm just referring to my algorithm, which I mentioned here. And then the logic we have to write is if ARR of j, if it is less than pivot, then 
you start doing some operation. What operation? First, you increment the value of i, and then you swap. But how will you swap? We don't have a swap function. Actually, we can create one. But instead of that, what we can also do is we can write the logic. So I can say int temp is equal to arr of i. Then arr of i will be replaced by arr of j. And then arr of j will be replaced by the temp. Okay, that's the values we have to swap. And that's it. This will run and it, you will do the partitioning part. But once you complete the for loop, again, we have to swap the value of i plus 1 with high. So you can actually use the same logic here, or same statements. So I'm not copy pasting, I'm just co reusing the code. Sounds better, right? So here we can say this will be replaced by i plus 1. And i plus 1 will be replaced by high. And this high is going to replace by temp. Swapping done. And at the end, we need to return i plus 1 because that's what is referring to the pivot. Okay, uh, looks like a right logic. We just converted that into here. So by doing the partition, we are saying re replace 1. In fact, once you get this algorithm, also try out the same thing which I've done on the board. Okay, then it will make much more sense. Okay, I hope this will work. What do you think? Let's run and let's see. Run and yes, looks like sorted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Let's change some values. Let's say this is 81, this is 62, and this is 111. Let's try with these values and let's see if they're sorted. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 62, 81, 111. So it works. So those, this is your quick sort. Now, why we are saying this is n log of n is because we only have one loop here, which is for loop, plus we are doing the partitions of it, right? So they can run parallelly. Yeah, so this is n log n, but in the worst case, it can go for n squared, but better than the other sorting techniques. So yeah, that's it from quick sort. We have written the code in Java and see you in the next video.